Well, hello, my abundant healers. I know that it's been a while since I popped in here and did a live video, but I had to come in. Um, so just fair warning, there are some marvelous Miss Maisel, the marvelous Miss Maisel spoilers in this video. Um, so the recent season two of the marvelous Miss Maisel came out and um, I got really fired up by the finale or by the last the, by the last episode more so than anything. Um, I also have kind of an interesting personal relationship to it in that I dated a guy who's good friends with the guy who plays Joel, her husband. So sort of I'm always kind of thinking about that whenever I watch the show. But the thing that I felt was the most relevant to our group and to the things that we talk about in here, which is how to step into your abundance by honoring your self-sovereignty, by honoring your creativity, by being able to step into and honor your own voice, by being aware of your message and your brand mission and understanding what it is that you value and then promoting yourself and selling what you have to offer from a place of soulful authenticity, right? That that is all my brand mission and that is all about what I try to teach in my program, The Abundant Healer, 90 Days to Scale Your Practice Online. It's about stepping into what you were born to do and to do it in such a way that you can call in the abundances you seek. Now, what's what I've loved about this character, Miss Maisel, um, Midge, as she's called in the show, is that she's this woman who's growing up in the, I believe it's in the 60s, and she wants to be a stand-up comedian and it's not something that is widely accepted or done in that period of time and so she's got this wild ambition and fire under her belt to pursue that expression right she's very funny she's able to talk about herself it's all about storytelling is the way that she that her comedy goes accept or reject or accept and reject it. So for example, her, her husband originally wanted to start off being a comedian, but she does it a thousand times better than he does. And they were going to get back together. And then he saw her do a bit in which he played a starring role and his ego couldn't handle it. He ultimately breaks up with her and says, I can't be a joke. Right. But it's so fascinating because at the same time, while he's admiring her so much for being so very much who she is, he's also can't join her there. And that's something that I think happens a lot when you step into your power and when you step into your sense of purpose, people will fall away. There are people who will not be able to meet you there. There are people who can't also stand in their fullest authenticity for whatever reason, for whatever it is that they're going through. And that's something that, that, you have to hold for yourself because you're not serving anyone by keeping yourself small. And she doesn't. She makes that choice. She's not going to give it up. She's going to stick by who and what she is. And I love that sort of theme and premise of this show. Now, without giving out too much, uh, giving too much away, there is an opportunity that presents itself throughout the rest of the season where she might be able to have it all. You get the sense that she could have loving partnership and then she gets this amazing opportunity that would really skyrocket her career and she's and the way that the show the way that the, the premise is set up is that she's going to have to decide between one or the other and i hate that <laughs> because but it's classic hollywood but it's just more of the same if you want this you can't have that if you want to make good money you have to give up your quality of life if you want to have a loving partnership and relationship, then you have to be willing to let the man make more money than you, or you have to be the one to stay home with the kids, or you have to be the one who makes sacrifices in life for the greater good of the family, la familia, right? And, or if you want to step into that kind of fame, then you can't have partnership, right? You can't have a, a loving or supportive partner because nobody could put up with that, right? No one's ego could take it. Oh, so annoying. <laughs> and that is it's just so evident of this paradigm that we all are so immersed in is that it's the scale. Like we, we in our lives, we all feel like we can either have one end or the other, but we can't have both. We can't have it all. And that's just a bunch of BS. Yes, you can. 
It all comes from what you believe. And when you believe that you can't have both, then you won't because you won't allow it in. And and she and in the in the movie she kind of exemplifies or the show she exemplifies this because she sabotages it, of course. And that's what we do is we sabotage things that don't line up with what we've been taught to believe. So when we have these opportunities to step into our successes, we sabotage it in some way. It may be through being overly perfectionistic. It might be through telling ourselves some kind of story about what we can and cannot have, or what, how we can and cannot succeed. And it's just that, it's stories, it's narratives, it's things that we can rewrite ourselves if we would just let go of those limiting beliefs and just like let it in and just say to ourselves, I can have that. There's no reason I couldn't have that. I am someone who is of free will. And the thing that I am the most in charge of is the way that I respond to and carry myself in this world. No one else can determine that for me but me. And once you make that decision and you allow everything that you do in your practice, whether you're a therapist, coach, and or healer, whatever, whatever the essence is of the thing that you believe that you've been put on this planet to offer in service of, right? The essence of that thing. If you can open up and say, you know what? I'm here to share this thing. And in sharing this thing, in fact, all things that I could ever want will come to me because I am of service and because I am here to be a teacher and because I'm here to be a messenger and because I'm here to be a leader and a healer of some kind, the universe will fall in line to open doors for me to accomplish that. And it's just about allowing it in. And that's, I think, where a lot of people get stopped up is they don't know how to allow it in. And what do I mean by that? Well, it means that you have to be willing and open enough to realize that the essence of the thing that you want may not come in the packaging that you think it will. So I've used this example before and I'll use it again for today and then I will wrap up this video. Imagine that you set an intention. So I want to lose 15 pounds, you know, before the new year, and I want to get a shiny red car so that I don't have to commute on public transit to work every day. Okay. Now, let's say within a week of setting that intention, uh, your cousin shows up at your door. I bought this bike for my nephew. Doesn't fit him. Lost the receipt. Can't return it. Do you want it? What are you going to do with a red bike? I have not, I, what am I going to do with that? What would I want a red bike for? You, in no way do you, are you open to and or see how this could actually be the universe's solution to the essence of the thing that you desire. Because consider, if you got that red car, maybe you would be sitting in traffic every morning. And now you're getting late to work when originally you wanted to get it so you'd be on time if not earlier right? Maybe you're getting pulled over more often because you have a red car and those have higher insurance rates on them, right? And they catch, and statistically speaking, they catch traffic cops eyes more often, right? Maybe you're, maybe the car is guzzling gas and now you're polluting the universe. And so, so now it's not really in service of all either. You're manifesting intention. Um, you know, now maybe you are gaining weight instead of losing weight because instead of walking that half mile to a mile to the train stop every day, you are sitting in a car in traffic eating, eating donuts or something like that when normally you wouldn't be doing that, right? But the bike, the bike, you, there's no traffic in the bike lane. Maybe now you're getting to work early because there's no traffic in the bike lane and your boss is like, oh, wow, I see you're really taking an initiative. I'm going to give you that promotion you've been wanting, right? So now not only are you saving money on public transit, but you are also getting a promotion. So you're making more money. And because you're getting there earlier, maybe you get to leave earlier. And now you're doing all these hobbies and different classes and things that you've been wanting to do. And to top it off, you're losing weight because you're burning twice the amount of calories that you would have been right? And it's not polluting the environment. So it's in service of the universe and all, right? So if you had not been able to see that bike as really delivering to you the essence of every single thing that you asked for, you're going to completely miss that. And then you're going to say, this manifesting stuff doesn't work. Law of attraction, pff, I don't even know what that is. And the world seems like a cruel place. You ask and you ask and you ask, and yet you, I give and I give and I give, and yet I get nothing back because you got blinders on, 
okay? So one practice that I do every morning that I recommend everybody try, if this is something you feel like you may have gotten caught up in, is I have a mindset practice where every morning I wake up and on a scale of one to 10, I say, okay, where's my vibe at? Where's my mindset at around money? Where's my mindset at around love? Um, is it on a scale of one to 10, one being terrible, 10 being, yeah, I'm excited, I'm anticipated, or I'm calm and I'm peaceful and really grounded around the subject. Where am I? And why that number? Why not a one? Why that number? Why not a 10? Are there any beliefs that I'm holding on to around the reasons why that are stopping me up? So like just this morning, I was doing one on love and I said, I'm at a seven. And why am I at a seven? Because I've done a lot of work on myself. The, what brought me here to even talking about teaching other people how to scale online is that I started making up to 10K per month in online revenue, talking about love and relationships and attachment style specifically. So love and money have always been very intricately intertwined for me. And so I'm like, well, I'm a seven because I've recently decided to go back into the dating fray. And I think there are opportunities for me out there, but I still, there's this part of me that struggles with boundaries and I'm worried that if I go on a date with someone then I owe them something and if they like me more than I like them, then I don't wanna hurt their feelings and blah, 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 blah. And this always ends up being like my challenge in business as well. But it's a seven and not a one because obviously I've been working on it. Maybe now, maybe not a 10 because I'm still having this conversation with myself, right? But it's okay to be in process and you can be a 10 being in process as long as you are willing to be in process. And I've been lazy with my mindset practice recently, but I'm getting back on it. Um, that's part of what inspired me to pop on here because I think maybe I've been holding on to that idea that I can only have one or the other. And when I saw it on Mrs. Maisel, I was like, no, that's exactly what I'm struggling with. And I know my clients are struggling with. So I wanted to pop on in here and show that with you. And just to remind you and even maybe even myself, yes, you can have it all. You can have it all. You can open up and allow for those things. And just to remember that allowance means that you're keeping your eyes peeled for the essence of the thing that you want. And remember, it may not always come in the packaging that you expect. So if any of this resonates with you and or if you know that you've got all your own myths passed down about how having and have not, right? If you have one thing, you can't have the other. This notion of balance, I think it's a BS myth. But this idea you have to let, if you have one thing, you can't have something else and that somehow balances the scales, no. We are shifting the scales and we are talking, opening up all the doors and it's a completely wonderful, loving, giving and abundance world and you can have it all. And so that is our mantra for this month. And I'm gonna be popping in a lot more frequently as we get closer to the holiday. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments in the feed below, and I can't wait to catch you on the next video.